just the viewing experience at the game. Just understand that the fans get heard. And I think by that, I mean that the fans feel like they're not being taken advantage of or taken for granted is the most important thing. Not advantage of. Although some people who have preseason tickets who think that they can should rightfully be, say that. Okay. And right. Should say that. But not taken for granted. Right. Right. And that that it shouldn't be taken for granted. Okay, you'll come back after we spend an entire off season about Deflategate. Or you'll come back after there's an entire conversation about Ray Rice and the way all that went down. That fans don't feel that they're taken for granted. And if they feel like they're taken for granted, they might feel like their kids won't be really safe because they feel like the NFL's not on top of that. All I know is this, okay? The times that I'm around the NFL front office and people who are in charge, they really do wring their hands over a significant injury a la now that Dennis Bird just recently passed away like that. They really, really do. If you recall... The last time that the, the uh, you can recall, I think, from your time as being in part of the NFL as long as you have been, the time that to me the culture change truly hit, for the lack of a better phrase, was that weekend when Muhammad Massaqua got blew up by James Harrison. Right. And Brandon Merriweather went top rope on Todd Heap. And was that the Eric Legrand weekend? It was yeah. the Eric yeah. Legrand weekend. And then there was one other hit where. Deshaun Jackson didn't realize the defense he was running into and kept running across the middle and got blown up right. by, uh, I think, Dante Robinson That's of right. Atlanta. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Dante Robinson blew him up, and Marshall Falk went on game day morning and the next day and said, hey, look, next week, say, that was really on Deshaun Jackson. He should know he needs to sit down as a receiver. He doesn't yeah. know the defense he's running into. But all three of those hits took place on the weekend. Eric LeGrand got I paralyzed. And then yeah. all of a sudden, a new emphasis was placed during the season, which you also know is very rare for the NFL to mid-season have some form of a, of a, a change of rules emphasis. And I do believe that is when really the league started taking – what was happening in a different manner than before. And I know everybody, and I've had conversations with the commissioner with nobody around. Nobody around. I mean, so he's not having to put on any airs. or act. I mean, he's genuinely, and I know people might think this differently about the NIH study and all the stuff that Congress has said about the NFL. I've seen it. They're genuinely concerned about health and safety you're seeing it now it just takes a while for this stuff to 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 get into place i was at that thursday night game that colt mccoy got blown up and right. worked his and just strolled back in the game himself and then you know with case keenum last year and then this year with cam newton not being pulled off the field now you're seeing that happening throughout nfl games where you're seeing players they're being pulled off the field left right up and down so when it all comes down to it, the player safety issue is one thing, and the kid safety issue is is all worked into one. But I think the overarching view is that fans feel that the NFL doesn't take them for granted, and I take that as a serious part of my job. You know, being somebody who's on the NFL Network every single week and every single important event, that the fan who tunes in knows that they're going to get it straight. They're going to hear it from Marshall and Irvin and Kurt and Mooch, who are never told what to say. Neither am I, by the way. I could tell you many stories during the lockout where I was told to say what you need to say. Never muzzled. Um, That said, all of that said is that fans need to feel that they are being protected as consumers as well as people who want their kids to play the sport. You're listening to the MMQB Podcast. Football's back. SeatGeek is the smartest, easiest way to find tickets for the games you want to see up close and in person this season. There's nothing like being in the stadium for the biggest plays of the year. And with SeatGeek, it's never been easier to get the seats you want for a great value. SeatGeek has the best deals on every ticket in the house, wherever you want to sit, whether that's the 50-yard line, the club seats, or the upper deck. Now pay attention to this because it's really important. My listeners will get a $20 rebate off their first SeatGeek purchase. That's right, 20 bucks free right in your pocket. 
And to get it, all you have to do is this. Download the free SeatGeek app and go to the Settings tab and click Add a Promo Code. Then enter promo code MMQB. SeatGeek will then send you $20 after you've made your first ticket purchase. It doesn't get any easier than this. Download your free SeatGeek app and enter promo code MMQB today. Finishing up with Rich Eisen of NFL Network. So, Rich, I struggle with this sometimes. I asked Arthur Blank on my training camp trip this year. We talked about this for a long time. Can Roger Goodell survive? There seems to be such negativity, and not just in the six-state region of New England, Mm -hmm. about Roger Goodell, but around the country. Not with the owners, certainly, but around the country. So from the vantage point that you look at, obviously you work for the NFL. You're not going to say, yep, Goodell's gone. But (laughs) tell me. No, I mean. Tell me. Just tell me in your mind if. Do you see Goodell doing this job well into the future? Or is the negativity around him so great that at some point he's going to wake up one day and say, man, I have had enough of being the American punching bag? All all I know, well, look, I I don't ever want to presume to think or put words in in the commissioner's mouth or any sport, I might add, let alone the one that obviously I'm, I'm involved in. All I know is what I see, you know, in person. From the guy who's told me over and over again, say what you want to say, and if anybody ever tells you that you can't say this, you call me, to the guy who called me up once during the lockout when I pre-taped an interview with him and and, and we had to bust the interview, as they use the TV phrase, because something went wrong technologically. And I re-asked, uh, I, when we started again, I didn't ask the difficult question about uh, the lockout that caused him to go, wow, you know, that's an interesting first question, as he said. And I re-asked it later in the interview when we retaped it, as opposed to starting off with it again. Mm-hmm. I switched up the order just to switch it up. And he sent me an email saying, hey, I, I just want to let you know if you switched up your order because you thought I was upset or I say, oh, wow, that's an interesting question, you could still say whatever you want to say. And this is during the nuclear winter possibility of a lockout. Right. To a guy that I've, I've been around on a golf course, to a guy that I've been around other people, uh, who is as personable and cool as they come, that – NFL fans would love to actually have a beer with this guy. I've seen this, okay? And I've also seen him at the draft where he is booed mercilessly. The whole country hears it. And he hears it too. Mm-hmm. And and I've seen that. And then I've seen him minutes after being booed go into the stands, the fans, into the crowd. And everybody wants to take a picture with him and get his autograph. It's the oddest thing I've ever seen <laughs> where collectively he's despised and individually, I guess people don't go up to people saying, Hey, I hate your guts usually, but individually it's a, it's kind of a different story. It's a huge conundrum, but I think it's something that personally, you know, if you ever pulled him aside, you know, does it bother you? You know, I guess he's human in that regard, but long term. I think he does loves what he does and loves what he does. And, but I would love to see a strategy from the, the NFL office where, you know, uh, there's a lot of, I feel your pain, like a little, you know, they right. did hire Bill Clinton's guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Lockhart is there just a little bit. I feel your pain. I think yeah, the big question, way. the big question is, I wonder if a guy like Joe Lockhart is ever going to be able to like, when Bill Clinton had his problems with Monica Lewinsky, right. he said in an understated way, what basically happened yes. is that Joe Lockhart determined what happened next and determined how they were going to do the damage control. Right. In my opinion, this is just my opinion because I don't know, neither of these people have told me this, but I think Roger Goodell determines how the damage control is going to be handled. And I don't think Joe Lockhart has as much control over Roger Goodell, honestly, as he had over Bill Clinton. And I know that sounds weird because, and it doesn't mean control over, but I mean probably influence, influence yeah. is, a, I, is I, a better way I to say know. it. I don't know. Like I said, you would know better than, yeah. than, than I would. You're there on the East Coast, probably in the NFL offices more than I am. I'm out here on the left coast trying to be the tip of the television spear. You kind of you kind of like being out here, don't you? I do love it out here. <laughs> I'm a native New Yorker, you know, born in Brooklyn, raised in Staten Island, and you know, when I go back to New York, I feel like I've never left it, and I love the convenience. I love the 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 hum and the pulse of the city. Love it. 
but I love it out here, man. I just love living out here. My kids love living out here. My wife and I love it out here. Yeah. Last question for Rich Eisen. So, Rich, America wants to know. Uh Uh-oh. How is it, Yes. and could it be through performance-enhancing drugs, Mm -hmm. that your Mm 40-time has actually gone down Mm -hmm. as you've gotten older? Because isn't it true mm -hmm. that you ran your fastest 40-time this year? Yes. Um, Yes. Now, my 40 times began getting faster after I got out of actual, literally, dress-up, laced-up dress shoes, okay? Okay. I used to do it truly as I was sitting on the set. That's how it started uh, when Terrell Davis and I were at the 05 05. Combine. And uh, we were bored getting ready to tape NFL Total Access about an hour-long break, and I turned to him, and I'm like, how fast do you think I can run the 40? And he goes, right now? I'm like, yeah, right now, like this. And he just laughed, and I said, go ahead and you keep laughing. I went down and did it. Had no idea that there was somebody in the truck hitting record and that uh, James Lytle was the name of the uh, steady cam operator. He just shot it. I didn't know he shot it. And they surprised me with it on Total Access that night. And uh, that was a 677. Seven, and I kept doing it in dress shoes. And then one year I, I blew out my hamstring, or as Mike Mayock screamed out, there's a sniper in the dome. It's like somebody <laughs> shot me with a shot. But anyway, long story short is so I started wearing. Um, to make sure that I wasn't going to get hurt. There's two things that I'm concerned about it is that I'm a going to get hurt or B it's going to jump the shark, you know, no longer be fun. So that alone will get you faster. Right. But after that though, I have gotten faster. And the only reason why I could tell you, Peter, is that the heart that beats inside, you can't teach it. You Either wanted it, baby. It I do. You wanted Ask it, baby. Mayock when you're around him next time, <laughs> Ask anybody who I work with at the combine, I really do want it. I really want it so bad. You Do you know? train for it before the thing? No, I, I think part of that is, you know, my wife is always after me. Like, why aren't you training for it? You know, because she's afraid of many different things. She says, train for it. I'm like, but no, the idea of it is that I'm just like a dude who's going to go out at the combine. I don't want to look like I'm practiced or rehearsed or anything. I'm just going to go as myself out there and do it. You know, the minute I take it too seriously, I'm concerned it will be jumping the shark, you yeah, know. Yeah. But this year, I was convinced get some help because dion has been after me for years about my start. He goes, that's where most of it's gone. The time goes that I'm get out of my stance. It's terrible. So this year, Brandon Marshall helped me out. He wow. offered to help me out and we went to, and we shot it for our show. We went to a spot in Malibu out here and he gave me some tips and it shaved off at least half a second. Wow. I mean, I mean I've had so many people trying to give me tips throughout the years and went in one year out the Otto Bolden for crying out loud, gave wow. me some tips about, six combines ago but so my start got better this year and um you know i'm trying to stay in shape as best i can and just keep on doing it as long as you know i'm i'm upright and it's somewhat decent now we're raising money for charity for last two years it's been for saint jude children's research hospital so that's all good man rich thanks so much for joining me on the peter king podcast always anytime it's the mmqb podcast Hey, everyone, listen up. You don't want to miss this. Make sure you remember these four letters, MMQB. These days, you can get practically everything on demand, like my podcast. Listen when you want, when it's convenient for you. So, why are you still making those time-consuming trips to the post office when we know how busy you are just running your business? When you can get postage on demand with Stamps.com. Anything you can do at the post office, you can do now right from your desk with Stamps.com. Buy and print official U.S. postage for any letter or package using your own computer and printer. And unlike the post office, Stamps.com never closes. You can get postage whenever you need it, 24-7. Now here's the part I told you to remember. Right now for my listeners, sign up for Stamps.com And use my promo code MMQB for this special offer. A four-week trial plus a $110 bonus offer, including postage and a digital scale. Don't wait. Go to Stamps.com before you do anything else. Click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in MMQB. Don't forget the microphone at the top of the screen. That's Stamps.com and enter MMQB. Back on the MMQB podcast with Peter King, I am at the Fox Sports 
Studios 